So for tonight's uh, Vesper presentation, it will be a special one. Why is it a special? Because it will be a night of proclamation and celebration, celebrating the birth of Christ in words and in songs. And we hope that for tonight's Vesper presentation, this will give a blessing to all of you as we celebrate the true meaning of Christmas, which, which is the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, for the information, we know that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December, but we do all know that whatever season he was born, he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for all of us, and has the promise that one day he will come back soon in the clouds of glory and to redeem us all. So I will read to you um, a passage in the Bible that reminds us the birth of our Christ Jesus and also a, a verse that gives us a hope and, and, a, and a joy for, for all of us. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. So tonight, let us join our voices with that of the angel and also proclaim once more to the world the glorious news of love, hope, peace, and the freedom of fear through Christ Jesus our Lord. And especially now that we are uh, facing the pandemic wherein everything is so uncertain, I think every one of us is affected of this um, pandemic season, whether directly or indirectly, and also some part of the world uh, is also facing some natural disasters, right? So it is such a blessing that we have hope in Christ Jesus. And now, without further ado, I will show the room to our brother Miguel Davis with the help of the technical committee. Miguel Davis, we're gonna play with for us some Christmas melodies and that will be followed by some or the rest of the church members with their special items especially prepared for all of us tonight.
thank you, Church, for those wonderful Christmas songs and Christmas melodies. And now let us entertain by a special poem which is prepared by Sister Mary entitled Pining for a Special Guest. Thank you so much uh, for this privilege, O oh Lord, and to all of my church brothers and sisters and children. Uh, this poem, Pining for a Special Guest, I chose it from the 50 from uh, my most recent collection because it says something about what we're going through in the world right now with uh, the limitations imposed by the pandemic. And it also tells us about something about the Sabbath, which I hope you're going to discover as I read the poem. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's the person who wrote this poem, wrote it when they were under restrictions in jail. And they didn't have even as much access as we have now, because even though our movements are limited and some people maybe uh, a lot of people are isolated, at least they have the phone, at least they have the television. This person did not have any of that. And they were really, really desperate to uh, have someone visit them, but it was impossible. So what next? Pining for a special guest. Bard from the garden, I can't admire you. Cute floating butterfly. Much less out of the essential shrub. You are rare. Fluttering ladybird. With my door sealed and my space so clean, you are bad, nasty cockroach. I dare you to fly thousands of miles to suck out my blood, biting mosquito. Who would tell me the hour of the night without you, crowing cock? Isn't it great? There is no marsh around for you croaking toad, I'm having fun smirking at you from my soilless base, gliding worm. Aren't you smart enough to slip in through the ceiling? Shy wall gecko? Above all else, Miss Ant, you are designed to sneak in and out, reaching homes of the rich and the poor in search of crumbs. Plus, in the absence of rain, you can safely sleep under my door. So why don't you sneak out of the lawn? Traverse the stairs, still till it make your way by the edges of the concrete and come in. I have something super for you. It's all yours for the taking. Guess what? A grain of rice fell off my plate today. And Mumtas swore that it had not been destined for me. So I saved it in my palms for you. See, it's under my door, inviting you to my still friendly space. It's a long grain. Two soldiers can carry it safely back to the nest to feed the colony and energize the soldiers to finish the new ant hill. Come on, auntie. 
I promise. I will not smash you. I swear on my honor to bring more grains of rice from the next meal. Let's keep the soldiers working. Miss Aunt, are you hearing me? Come on, quickly. The queen is waiting to crown you for your ingenuity, especially because of, guess what? Your finesse despite your teeniness. That's the poem, finding for a special guest. And if you could see, there's a picture of the one who was finding for the guest, stiltily looking, trying to look under the door. All of that is imaginary from a prison cell. Thank you so much for listening.
program. Uh, you guys are very technologically savvy, much more than um, what I get to work with over here. <laughs> so um, what a blessing. Thank you all. I want to know the, the planning that's gone into this, the video work ahead of time. Um, wow. I miss you all. <laughs> um, may, God, may God continue to work in your lives. Let's bow our heads and pray. Okay. Father, we come before you we are singing songs. We are lifting our hearts to you. We are taking this time to choose to worship. And when the world is thinking about the day and the birth of Jesus and all those things, Father, I pray that we will focus on truly the reason why Jesus came to draw us closer to you and to transform our lives. And we just praise your name, Father, for the, the time that this is, a time to remember, a time to give gifts, a time to, to choose to appreciate one another, and, and just to respond in our hearts to you. So I pray, Father, that as we go forward right now, opening your word, we pray that your spirit will come and speak to each one of us, wherever we happen to be on this great globe. Uh, people spread out all over there in, uh, in Europe and Belgium and other areas and also here in the United States and others that may be listening through recording another time, we just ask that your spirit will touch our hearts and draw us closer to you. And I pray this all in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, this is, um, it's always a little bit of a different kind of an experience to speak uh, through technology because I don't get to see all of you and I don't get to hear your voices and so forth and I wish I could, but this is a blessing to be able to connect this way. So. For our thought this evening, I invite you, if you'd like, to open your Bible and turn with me to uh, Galatians chapter 4, and I'm going to read to you just a few verses, and as we think about this, this subject of heaven coming down, heaven coming near, uh, what God has done for us, I want you to th think about these words. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, says, but when the right time had come, God sent his son born of a woman, subject to the law, God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that we, he could adopt us as his only very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father or Daddy Father or whatever term you use of endearment for your father crying out to our father. So now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir, your inheritance. Isn't that an amazing set of verses? That the reason for Jesus coming to live, to be part of our humanity, to at the very perfect time, literally come down from heaven to become one of us, that he might redeem us and bring us back to the Father's love. This is a, a theme that we will study for all eternity and opening our hearts more and more to what God has done. Well, I want to share with you just one paragraph from the book Desire of Ages and I share a few thoughts with that. But it's coming to you from chapter five called The Dedication. And uh, by the way, this is an advertisement for any of you. If you haven't read Desire of Ages recently, please, please choose to read it this coming year. Read it soon. I know personally in my own life, I read it twice a year because I want to be immersed in the life of Jesus. 
and his teachings and his love and to be able to see the character of God shining in the face of Jesus. Um, and it blesses my life immensely. And especially during this Christmas time of year, those first five or six chapters of Desire of Ages are absolutely phenomenal. And so this is coming from the dedication. And this paragraph is a very interesting one. It's talking about why did Jesus come? What was the purpose? And here's the answer. That the hearts of many, excuse me, I'll start over again. That the thoughts and hearts of many would be revealed. In the light of the Savior's life, the hearts of all, even the creator to the prince of darkness are revealed. Now, so think about that for a second. Jesus is coming to earth, choosing to leave heaven, to, to come to this dark, rebellious planet. He came to reveal the hearts, not just our hearts and how we respond, but also <laughs> the hearts of the enemy and the hearts of the Father. And you might say, well, what do you mean? Well, this is why. Because Satan, I'm continuing now in the paragraph, Satan has represented God as selfish and oppressive, as claiming all and giving nothing, as requiring the service of his creatures for his own glory and making no sacrifice for their good. Now, pause for a second. You may be thinking, well, that's not the picture I have of God. Well, if it's not, praise God. Praise his name and praise that you've been given a chance to be part of a movement of people who see that differently. But do you realize that there are many, many people, many Christians that believe that the God of the Old Testament just is waiting for you to mess up so he can fry you for eternity, to cook you. Or otherwise, the, the picture that people have is literally that Jesus comes to save us from the wrath of God. That's the devil's lies. They, they make us think that God is against us. And if it weren't for Jesus protecting us and saving us, then God would destroy us. So people live in fear of the Father. And yet, what does Scripture say? Jesus said that he came to reveal whom? The Father. If you've seen me, Jesus says, you've seen the Father. And so Jesus came to reveal these things, to, to unveil the lies that the enemy had given to the world. I, just recently, I was in a church, and literally, the church members said, I have lived in fear of God afraid, like terror, fear of God, because I can never measure up. I can never do enough. There's always something wrong in my life. And she's lived in fear of that. And yet she's trying by the grace of God, she's receiving the truth that actually God is for her, not against her. So as we've continued to preach and teach the gospel, the, the steady, steady drip week by week of the gospel, she's beginning to see a different picture of who God is. Hallelujah. So Jesus came to reveal that, to unmask those lies, because Satan had represented God as selfish and oppressive and all those things. And in reality, that's who Satan is. Now, the next sentence is, but the gift of Christ reveals the Father's heart. <laughs> it testifies that the thoughts of God towards us are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Jeremiah 29, 11. It declares that while God's hatred of sin is as strong as death, his love for the sinner is stronger than death. Think about that. You are not sinned. Sin may be in us and we have done it. And God wants to destroy that which destroys us. But he loves us. Hallelujah. Think of sin not as something that's integral to you but think of it like an external thing one person calls it a leech you know it's sucking on your skin and god wants all of those leeches off and of course we would too if we thought of it that way how many leeches do you want to keep none god's hatred for sin is as strong as death but his love for us is stronger than death and then it goes on having undertaken our redemption he will spare nothing, however dear, which is necessary to the completion of his work. No truth essential for our salvation is withheld. No miracle of mercy is neglected. No divine agency is left unemployed. Favor is heaped upon favor. 
gift upon gift. So think about it, you know, in this time where all these folks are giving gifts, the father poured out all of heaven in the gift of Jesus Christ to redeem us, to rip away the veil, to reveal his heart, to reveal the lies, of the enemy, and to reveal our hearts as well. The whole treasury of heaven, I'm continuing again, this is page 57, by the way, the whole treasury of heaven is open to those he seeks to save. Having collected the riches of the universe and laid open the resources of infinite power, he gives them all into the hands of Christ and says, all these are for humanity. Use these gifts to convince them that there is no love greater than mine in earth or heaven. And that our greatest happiness will be found in loving me, loving God. Isn't that an amazing thought? So Jesus came to reveal all these truths. And so you, you sit there and ponder, well, okay, revealed the Father, revealed the lies of the devil. But it also says us. What does it reveal about us? Jesus came to show us that we can truly trust our Heavenly Father, that he is good, that he desires the best for us. So it actually is to show us so that we can choose to open up the hearts that have been hurt the hearts that have been wounded over and over again. You realize what happens, right? When someone hurts us, there's a choice that we make. A choice that says, I will keep loving, or a choice that says, I'm pulling in. I'm not going to let anyone hurt me like that again. And what happens is we keep doing that over and over. Eventually, we begin to lose the ability to love and the ability to trust. So Jesus came to reveal the Father, that we might choose to let him love us, to choose to believe, to trust again. And that's incredibly important. You know, the phrase hurt people, hurt people. Well, we are surrounded by hurting people and we just go around hurting others. But by God's grace, as we let this truth, as we let the life, the death, the resurrection, the indwelling power of Jesus I love the way the introduction was, Janice, how you shared that, how, you know, <laughs> he's now reigning for us, interceding for us in heavenly places right now. We let those truths be real in our lives so that we no longer have to hurt people. We can bless people because blessed people bless people. Loved people love people. And that's why Jesus came to show that, to live that, to be that, to fill us in that way. And there's more. As we respond, as we open up our hearts to that truth, God begins to do something in us. You see, the reason is there's many people that aren't going to be able to see Jesus. There's many people, although technology is pervasive and everywhere, you can watch, you can read, you can get anything you want. There is no shortage of access anymore. But even in that world, people aren't learning about Jesus they need to see Jesus now. As one person said, they need to see God with skin on him. They need to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as we respond to these truths, as we look at the life of Jesus, as we let him set us free from the lies of the enemy, to embrace the love of the Father, and to experience what we just read, every gift given for humanity— being poured out as God does this work in us, as we walk in trust, in faith, in healing and hope, then we become his agents and messengers to love others that way. And my brothers and sisters, that is so incredibly needed right now. I want to share with you just two people that I've met recently. One person I was friends with many years ago. And she has in many ways, destroyed her life. And for whatever reasons, out of the blue, you know, technology, media, and so forth, she reaches out to me. We haven't talked for probably 20 years. And she's reaching out because she needs to know that somebody cares still. Most of the people around her, because of her own choices and other things that have happened, they've cut her off. They've burned the bridges. They've stopped communicating. They won't trust her. They won't listen to her. And she's broken. She's 
hurting. She's lonely. So she reaches out. And as she's sharing, I'm trying to share with you this, her, this, this news about God's love. And you know what she said? She said, I don't believe he even loves me anymore. She had become so broken, so hurt, that she'd so closed off that even God's love, she thought, was no longer something she would trust. What can we do? Now, I can share and try to communicate and, and from afar try to give, give hope in those ways. But ultimately, if she doesn't choose to open her heart to receive that truth, her pain will keep her closed away. Oh, brothers and sisters, we are surrounded by people hurting like that. And they need to see and they need to experience love through you. Patience through you. Kindness through you. Goodness, self-control, uh, perseverance. They need to see that God can and does work in our lives in such a way that we no longer become self-centered, broken, hurting people, closed off protecting ourselves but we begin to become lavish loving people giving and sharing and blessing all those around because of what we've received from god through christ that's why he came to bless us i met another man just recently i was at a meeting in a coffee shop kind of place and we were there talking and as every the meeting all finished we all go away i happened to see this man over by himself and I started talking to him. And uh, for whatever reasons, we connected. And as he's sharing more of his story, uh, he, he began to open up. And he said, you know, he says, I was a Vietnam War veteran. Um, came back from Vietnam at, at a particular time in the United States and in a particular place. That when I did come back, there was no support there was no, oh, thanks for fighting. Or it was uh, a very different situation than what some of them have experienced now, where people were spitting at him, calling him horrible names, uh, pulling away from him, the friends cutting off their connections, all those things. And he became very hurt, very angry, very broken. And he began to pull away into himself. He let his hair grow wild. He didn't obey any rules. He got in lots of trouble and uh, just pulled himself away, cutting off from the rest of the world around him. And he lived that way for many, many years. And then, I guess he found a wife at some point. She ended up dying. His mother died. And in his incredible brokenness, he happened to come to a simple little coffee shop. And the person that works there, just a kind lady, day in, day out, smiling, <laughs> choosing to care about him. He said, she has saved my life. Her smile, her kindness, her asking questions. Through the years, and it took time, he began to open up and, and to say, maybe there's a chance. Maybe someone can love me. And he began to open that closed heart. And now he has joy in his face. Now he's walking with God. All because of one person in a coffee shop choosing to care and to be present and to love and to share. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you have no idea how important a smile is. How important to be present. You know, to, we, we live in an age where even when people are sitting together, they're often on their phone, right? Instead of being present with the person <laughs> to, to to really believe that when we're together this is the most important thing for me to be doing right now and to have my heart at peace filled with the love of god being able to realize you are what i'm asked to be doing now to love to do everything necessary to focus not to be distracted okay okay no but to actually be with people an act of a smile of love and care like that is revolutionary today. Remember, loved people love people. So Jesus, he came. He came to reveal the Father. He came to expose the lies of the enemy. He came to show us so that we would know 
who God is. And so from the manger, every step Jesus took, every miracle, every teaching, every thought, everything that he did with his disciples to the cross, where he then chose to trust the father, even when he didn't feel it, even to the death. And God has raised him from the dead, breaking the hold of sin and death from the grave. And now he's reigning in heavenly places and he's coming soon to be bring us back to heaven. So when I think about that, this time of year then becomes a time of worship and gratitude and praise. And I pray that as you ponder these things, as you have time with family, hopefully as you have time with friends, I pray that you will remember what God has done for each one of us when he poured out all of heaven in the gift of Jesus Christ to bring us back to his heart. So heaven has come down to draw us back, to love us, to bring healing, to give us purpose, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those things to bless us. And so I pray that you'll be abundantly blessed. And as you sing the songs, as you read the poems, as you share these things, may you choose to let it reveal your heart that you'll respond to his love. So may God richly bless you. Greetings here from Missouri, my family to yours. May God richly bless you. I'd love to just pray with you before I head out. Oops. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord God Almighty, thank you for the unspeakable gift that you've given to us in Jesus Christ. The enemy wanted to push you and to have us sin so high-handedly and horribly that you would pull away and leave this dark blot of a world alone. And yet, that's when you gave everything in the gift of Jesus. He came. He lived. He displayed you. He showed us the character of who you are. And he brought us back to you. Father, thank you. Thank you for this unspeakable, incredible gift in Jesus Christ. And may it bless each one of our hearts. I pray that you be with each family represented here and those who may be watching later. May you speak these truths into their lives. May we receive them. May the veil of the enemy's lies be broken and torn away that we may see you in your love and your glory. And may we trust you with everything I pray because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for this timely message. I guess we are all blessed by that. And indeed, uh, praise God for his indescribable gift. And um, yeah, Jesus' nat nativity um, is God's gift to all human race. And in his son, God gave us the most precious gift. And I pray that we may manifest God's character to our lives, not just for this season, but throughout our lives as we uh, wait for, her, for his soon return. And thank you uh, so much, Pastor. We are so glad to have you always. And um, uh, yeah, we hope that we can have you uh, again uh, soon as you have okay. been a uh, part of our family, uh, of our growing family here in Brussels. And now to be continued, let us um, hear uh, from Miguel Davis, another special item that he has prepared entitled, Oh Holy Night, and that is to be followed by the rest of the church members who prepared their special item as well. It's a blessing to be here uh, to celebrate with you such a uh, this exciting, exciting moment in history. And this is when Jesus was born. Um, some, the world says December 25th, how fitting it is that it is on Saturday. So here's the song, I know you all know it. You can sing along in your rooms, wherever you are. Holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of a dance. 
Savior's birth. Lonely the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and his soul left his word. Christmas, everybody. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be
dare to ask once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow So hang a shining star upon the highest bar And have yourself a merry little Christmas night Hello everybody, I would like to share a little scripture song with you. It's a song that a dear friend of mine composed and I like this verse so much because it tells us that we can truly cast all our cares upon the Lord. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ says that uh, in John 13, 35, that it is when we would love one another that others would know that we are his disciples. And uh, in loving one another, there are moments when we can have frictions here and there. And it helps us to develop patience and all of that. Um, Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so sharpens a man the countenance of his friend. I'm reading this poem to you. Criticize me, I beg of you. It is yet another poem taken from my recent collection, Escape from Prison, and you'd make sense out of it. Criticize me, I beg of you, my friend. Prick me softly like the ripe hevea tree, ready to let its milk ooze out into hanging pots. Otherwise, the children won't have rubber to protect their feet. If not, with what shall we make wheels for bikes and cars? Criticize me, please. But please, don't dismember me. Be careful like my mother digging the earth with her hoe to till the soil, uprooting weeds 
without searing the plants. If not, there will be no grains, veggies, and fruits to nourish millions waiting for the abundance of harvest. Criticize me, I plead, but just between you and I, not in whispers to others like a sword that stops the back. Choose your words, measure them, time them and warn me in time to go on my knees, will fully to listen. So upon rising, I become finer, smoother, taller, thanks to the mending words of your redeeming, criticism. Thanks for listening. Amen.
experience, um, uh, enjoyable songs to listen to, um, good poems, and Brian reminded us that Jesus came to be a blessing to us. Isn't that fantastic? He came to be a blessing to us, also to show us how we need to live. And so as the program was entitled Heaven Came Down, it reminded me this song that I used to sing when I was very young. So here we go. I know you know it. Oh, what a wonderful day, day that I'll never forget. After I wondered in darkness where Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling the joy and time. He made all my darkness depart. Heaven came down and the glory filled my soul. Then at the cross, my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, glory filled my soul. Let's try the best. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul.
blessings greeting everyone and happy Sabbath. Amen. Christmas indeed is a great opportunity to remind us all that the baby who was born in the manger is coming again soon. And we are all waiting for that by God's grace. And before we close our um, very nice Vesper uh, program, wherein we were blessed by all these special items, let us uh, say thank you to all the people who are involved, especially who gave and devote their time to prepare these special items, who gave their heart on this, to have this um, Vesper, special Vesper possible. Uh, we would like to say thank you to Pastor Brian Gallant. Thank you for that time, uh, timely message, and uh, we are all blessed by that. We'd like to say thank you as well to Miguel Davis, the youth singing group, Marco, Rona, Cecilia, David, the Ratoko, Rat, Rakoto Myandra family, Mary Mu, Sister Sweetie, uh, Daniela, Gianluc Munyapeta, and myself as the moderator, Edward, who is the technic and design. And, uh, and to all of you who are on this um, participating on this special event. We would like to say thank you to all of you and a Merry Merry Christmas. And let us not forget the true meaning of the Christmas and John 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. God gave us the most precious gift who is his son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, thank you for your unconditional love to us that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus, who died on the cross. Lord, thank you for your peace, for your hope, and for the freedom of fear that you have. You gave us the spirit of love and not the spirit of fear. Lord, uh, in this season, may we be reminded for your uh the true reason of this season, which is the birth of your Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that you may continually baptize us with your Holy Spirit, that we may continually walk in you by grace, help us to grow in you. And Lord, uh, help us to be light in this world as what you have commanded us. And uh, help us to be a blessing and that we may see Jesus in others. Lord, I also want to pray for... Uh, the family of Jacar, uh, that he lost his father. May you comfort the family and that you may continue to strengthen them and that uh, help them to trust you that uh, whatever circumstances, Lord, this is your will for us and help us to rejoice always in your, in all circumstances for this is your will for us. And that, Lord, uh, thank you because you... Uh, it is written in your word, you teach us not to worry, but to really um, cast our cares upon you, for you cares for all of us. Thank you, Lord, for also for making this event possible through your grace. And may you also continue to bless those people who are involved and everyone who, was, who, who are in here. Uh, we all put this in your name, in Jesus Christ. Amen.